I've got a gentleman all the way from the United Kingdom, Edinburgh. It's Scotland. Am I right? Is it Scotland? Did I get it right that time? <laughs> yeah, Scotland. <laughs> mate, yeah. And you notice how I got? I had a little bit of a, a twinge of a Scottish accent. I tried. It was probably embarrassing <laughs> myself, but that's okay. I do it all the time. So, but anyways, today's guest is Joe Trodden, and he's from Edinburgh, and he is with us today to continue down this path that we've kind of set as far as having entrepreneurial mindsets. So I, this week, I just happened to have Chris Spurvey on, and he's talking about cultivating that sales mindset. And mindset, the term mindset, seems to almost be catching on as kind of a buzzword. I don't know, because this is about the third or fourth guest I've come across that talks about mindset, mindsets, and specifically mindsets for entrepreneurs. So if you've started a business and you're going down that road, you finally got it off the ground and you're rocking and rolling, things are going pretty smooth, but you, you need to do something to take it to that next level. And something's got to change. And according to Joe, that something is you. So with no further introduction, Joe, thank you for joining me and welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Larry. Thanks very much for having me on. Really appreciate it. So yeah, like I was saying, you know, the mindset mentality, the mindset mentality, I guess it's kind of a mentality or a thought process of having mastery, as you were discussing just a little bit before we kicked the recorder on. Mastering that is, it's a challenge in and of itself. And I know that a lot of entrepreneurs, I, I know many of them, and I kind of consider myself one, there is that crossover between actually, you know, filing for the business and getting the business started and then taking that business and excelling with it and, and really just putting it into high gear and just riding it to the wheels fall off. And so many people have a hard time doing that. And I assume a lot of that is just because we have possibly these preconceived notions that if we don't meet X requirement by Y, then we're not going to make it. Or somebody says something to us, we start doubting ourselves. What is it that you refer to when you're talking about having that mindset? Well, it's interesting for entrepreneurs. So for me, entrepreneurs go through different phases of their development in terms of their mindset. I mean, it is, it is a huge topic, but I do think what might be interesting in terms of that journey is that when you start out as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to deal with the chaos because whatever your plan is, it's not going to work the first time. Right. You know, whatever the meticulous plan is that people have worked up in their, in their homes, when you actually go out to market, it's all very different. You've got to have that thick skin you with uh, the ability to really you know, drop and change a plan really quickly. You've got to be totally open to feedback. You, know, you don't have to listen to all. You will get the doubters and the naysayers. Sometimes that's a bit of transference because they're jealous that you're doing your own thing. But you have to be able to deal with uh, the rejection and the being wrong and, and the chaos. But actually, the businesses that I work with, um, once you sort of get your toehold in the market, then you have to kind of switch things around a little bit more and put more process and structure in so that when you're bringing in teams, they know what they're doing. And you have to develop then as a leader. So there's a lot of different phases to the mindset development as you go through it. There isn't a particular, you know, here is absolutely all the traits of an entrepreneur. You know, you can't say, well, if you tick all these boxes, you're definitely going to make it. It doesn't really work like that. Right. But it's definitely about the self-awareness, really understanding who you are, where you're going to encounter these challenges, and what superpowers you've got. I noticed that you actually referred to that in your one page. You're about, you know, I've got superpowers. Really understanding what they are so you can leverage them in the right way. And, and is there some sort of internal analysis that we could do? Is there maybe an internal checklist that we could check off to see where we stand? Is there a little test we could take to go, hey, if I'm looking at myself internally, and I know this is extremely difficult to do for people because sure. you always want to have the best opinion of yourself. And you're going to, oh, no, I do that fine. Ah, that's great. I'll get to that. But, you know. <laughs> and, but when it comes down to it, you may be lacking in some of these areas and not even really understand it. And what I was trying to say was self-assessment, not analysis, mm -hmm. but that's the only word that would come to me because that's what I do. I'm a business intelligence analyst. So, uh, <laughs> But uh, if we did this self-assessment, is there something there that we could look for that might be an indicator of our mindset might be a little bit off and we might need to tweak it a bit? I think um, my, my favorite um, test is Myers-Briggs. 
you know, Myers-Briggs is a personality type test to just level up your self-awareness a bit. I mean, you can take one at 16personalities.com. It's totally free. And it's a really good um, initial first step into understanding yourself that bit more. You know, you can do it in just whatever that is, like 15 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. And what's really powerful about that as well is understanding how other people think too. So, you know, what the point I made at the start around being able to handle the chaos, there's a Myers-Briggs type that works on pairs. And one pair is judger and perceiver. So judge are someone who really wants the concrete plan. You know, we'll put these clear milestones down. We'll put every hour's completely catalogued into their calendar. And perceivers are the ones that are like, well, you know, we'll see what happens. And another opportunity will always come up. But when you're in the early stages, being a bit more of a perceiver can really help you. Because judges hate being off plan. So now I'm off plan and now I'm freaking out about it. Right. When actually, you know, you need to be a bit more adaptable in the early stages. And the, the thing is, if, if you're aware that you react that way, another good thing about Myers-Briggs is there's the stress heads. So you can look at your type and then think, these are the situations that I am going to stress myself out in. So when you actually find yourself stressed, you can pr just prepare for that a bit better and go, well, I know I freak out when I'm off plan. So what do I need to do about that? You know, do I need to go and write a, a, a list out? Do I need to think about what the alternate is? It's all about almost just being in that moment and being able to step outside of it and say, this is what's really going on in my head. But Myers-Briggs, I think, is a really um, powerful place to start. Yeah, and I mean, they're, they're kind of par for the course as far as it goes. They're industry leaders in that type of analysis. So I, I'm, I'm right there with you in that, and that they don't get to the level that they're at and not have a good quality self-assessment that's involved there. So um, I think that would be good. But at the same time, it goes back to even if I find that I'm lacking in certain areas, do you recommend that I have someone to hold me accountable during those times? Or once I have these things identified, what are some of the mm -hmm. steps that I can take to make sure that I put them in place and I maintain that, that direction, that path? Well, understanding yourself is like one of those first key steps because you are going to freak out on the process. You know, if you can't handle the odd freak out, don't be an entrepreneur because it is, it is hard going, man. It's not all, you know, <laughs> it's not all just cash windfalls and IPOs here. It's, it is tough work, you know. Um, you mentioned the accountability. I mean, this is, this is my whole thing as a coach. Now, I'm quite, I'm quite tough on my group when it comes to that. We're, we're a bit, we're a bit um, hardcore because the guys really want to accelerate. So what we do is things like they'll set what we call a, a bold action. So that's something that is like a 10x, really outside of your comfort zone, doing one of those a month. And if you don't have it done, then you're out of the group. And what happens there is that they set that action because it's something they really want to do. And for most of that month, their mind is tricking them out of doing it, saying, oh, no, this is a mistake. Oh, don't do this. Oh, you're going to look so stupid. But it's something they really want. And without the accountability, they wouldn't do it. Now, I would encourage also what we call compound actions, which are just those little choices that you make that will move you in the right direction. So there's a really nice point that um, Jeff Olson in a book called The Slight Edge makes about a compound action is something that's easy to do and easy not to do. So it's quite easy not to make that sales call, you know, and just put it off. It's actually quite easy to do as well. Do you know what I mean? Like there are those little moments where you, if you're just self-aware and you go, I'm taking, you know, I'm taking something that I'm taking a little action here. Bit of thing. So it's about getting the balance right of the little actions and that real heart stopping, you know, real power action that's going to move the needle big time. Exactly. But I have to say the only way that those things continue to get done is with accountability. For sure. You're absolutely spot on there. So you, you mentioned your group. Do you have a, a large group that you have maybe online meetings with or a group that you you uh, attend in person? Or how, do, how does your coaching work? So we do it in person. The way that I uh, work with my guys is we have one-to-ones. So we have e-learning stuff that they do um, each month, which just gives them another shift, another perspective shift on their mindset, maybe something to do with the business as well. We do quite a bit of strategy work. I mean, I have to say that when they come through the startup phase, like your strategy is a bit all over the place, like, and it has to be because there's, you know, things are changing all the time. But then you've really got to get a context down. And that can be quite scary for entrepreneurs as well to like commit to this is what I'm actually going to execute on. 
So we do a bit of the strategy work, but there's a lot of the mindset content there as well. And sometimes that's directly ap applicable in that moment. Sometimes it's something they'll refer back to. Then you've got the one-to-one -one coaching that's on top of that. And for any entrepreneur out there, I would just recommend that they get a specific, well, I'm going to say that, hey, I'm a coach, right? But <laughs> I, would recommend, I would recommend that they get a specific entrepreneurial coach because you need that space. See all those like the fears and the doubts and the anxiety and all this, the shadow self that we call it. You need somebody that is just that safe container to get that completely out of your head because otherwise it'll just twist around. And like I say, the last component there is the mastermind group. So I like to do that as a physical thing. Um, I just feel that they, we've tried sometimes with the online, but just being in the same room and, you, you know, you can feel it. You can feel what that energy is like and how somebody's people are just more open and honest. So that is that is a combo. The learning to keep, you know, improving your mind, the one to ones to untwist your thinking and then that camaraderie and the collaboration that happens and the learning from each other in the group i just found that's a really good combo for my guys yeah i think that's so big is to have the group mentality and then take that group mentality and like you're saying refine it in the one-to-ones because yep. accountability with your coach is one thing but accountability with your peers is something totally different and sure. it seems like to me i put more pressure for whatever reason, I can always make an excuse with my coach, right? And, well, you know, this happened or that happened or whatever. Not with me, Chad Larry. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I don't want you as a coach. I don't know. You know, like, you know I got to have those easy outs. But with my peers, it's like we're all trying to do the same thing. And if I don't do something the way that I committed to doing it for the group, not necessarily for the group, but in front of the group, mm. as I report yep. back to the group, I'm not just letting one person down in my coach. I'm letting however big the group is, we'll say half a dozen people, you know, I'm letting down six, seven, eight other people. And I feel so bad because I'm not paying them right there. They're there sure. doing the same thing I'm doing. They're holding me accountable just because, well, that's part of the process. You know, with my coach, I'm paying them. So they're still getting paid. And, you know, it goes back to the whole getting out of something. But, you know, <laughs> just as an example, Joe, maybe I do need to hire you because I've been working on this <laughs> damn course. And I don't even cuss on this podcast, and I just said damn. But I've been working <laughs> on this course since November, and uh -huh. we're, we're in we're in May now, and it's not done. And I was in here recording even before we started get, getting going just this evening. But uh, there has got to be something. Where I'm dropping the ball somewhere, and my coach, she's just like, "Well, Larry, you'll get it, you'll get it. Just keep with it, Larry." She's super supportive, and she's a super sweet lady. But she's not punching me in the face, saying, "Larry." Get to it. Get it done. You know, and I think maybe she might be a little too soft for me. So maybe I do need you back there, you know, smacking me around a little bit. But well, look, look, man, I've, I've only tasered one client, you know, <laughs> um, to be honest, it was it wasn't worth the lawsuit. But, uh, but see, it sure was see the fun. way. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, it was worth it. Uh, but the, the way I work with uh, clients is you can't pay me if you're not doing the work. You know, because actually it doesn't really do my reputation any good either. True. Because if you say, you know, yeah, I'm with them for six months and, uh, you know, I'm not getting the results. It doesn't matter because it doesn't excite me either. And it doesn't bring anything to the group, you know. You make a, you make a point there about letting the group down. But I think there's a, another, that's definitely true. Um, because it becomes part of your identity to be part of this group. And right. then there's the norms and everything else. But the flip side of that is what I see quite often is they see somebody else can do it, you know. Whenever you hold up, you can hold up like uh, Richard Branson, you know, Elon Musk. I like, you know, I like these guys, but there's a, such a sense of detachment, you know, so you wheel them into a room and they say their thing and you're inspired, but you don't really have that connection with them, you know, because they're, they're miles away. But when you've got a group of people that you're like, hey, they're, they're just like me. And then they've gone in and they've done, you know, this call or I had somebody who <laughs> who's trying to get the attention of a buyer. And what they did was they went and just sat in the reception area for three hours, you know, and for, for this buyer just to kind of pass by and then just jump on them, you know? Right. And there's no way they would have done that without the encouragement. Right. But then somebody else sees that and they're like, well, if they can do that, then I can do it. And almost I should be doing that because I'm part of this group too. So that that whole sort of um, saying of you're the average of the five people you spend most time with, it is true. You know, everybody raises their game as well. Well, iron sharpens iron sharpens iron. 
And so if we're all doing the same thing, we're all performing at the same level, we're all only going to get better. So I sure. love that mentality. Now, I, I don't know of a place, and I, maybe I'm not looking hard enough. Here we go again, a little self, self uh, <laughs> analysis here, a little self-assessment. I don't know of a group, and I live in, a, in Dallas, Fort Worth, so I live in a big, you know, metroplex. There's got to be a group out there that's similar to yours that would have the same level of accountability. And I, I have to imagine that even if somebody's listening to the podcast and they're in a smaller town or a smaller city, they've got to be. There's got to be groups that are similar, whether it's a uh, whether it's a Toastmasters group. I'll tell you. And I don't know if you're familiar with Toastmasters, but it's a nas- uh, an international speaking yeah, organization. Me. And I remember back in my early 20s, I taught karate. And my instructor made all of his instructors m- go to Toastmasters to learn how to speak properly and conduct themselves in front of a class and just sharpen yep. everything, right? And this, was the, 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 this group held each other accountable in ways that I have still to this day never seen. And mm-hmm. it literally, it took my speaking to the next level. Sure. And I mean, there were, there were, there were CEOs in there. There was, I remember the, the, uh, the dean of the college, the, the community college was there. And I know it's a community college, but he's still the dean. You know, I mean, just all these Cat Eddie guys were in there doing, and women as well, were doing the speaking. But they put the pressure on. If you, at any, and this is just an example for the pressure that they put on you. If you're doing your, your speech that week. And you let out any kind of grammatical grunt, such as a uh or ah uh, or <clears throat> or whatever it would be to, sure. to to fill that dead void. Everybody around this table, and there's probably twelve to fifteen people in the group, had had <laughs> had ding the bells that you could you could hit and it would ding. So if you made a mistake or you 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 used a grammatical grunt, the whole room would just erupt with ding 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 ding. It's like you know, it's like you won something, but you won the bad prize. <laughs> so it's accountability, but at the same time, it's it's supportive accountability. You know, they call you out on the on the carpet, but they they do that to everybody, and everybody's mm-hmm. is equally pushed as everyone else. And it's very difficult to find that these days. And I don't know if it's a mentality that we've adopted or what it is, but I have a hard time finding any place with that level of accountability. So here's here's the challenge that I see with that is um, one of the points you raised around. It's quite hard to turn down a client's money, you know. Right. And I'm not saying that you do it. That there are coaches out there that would do that nefariously, you know, and with sort of a malevolence or whatever, or like as a business model. Sure. Um, but if you're still coming, it's like a driving instructor, you know. If you're still needing another lesson, you still need another lesson. That's cool. This it keeps me in the money. Yeah. Um. So I think you've got an element of that. No. I, again, I don't think it's fully intentional, but it's it's hard to hold people accountable and then just kick them out. The other element of that when you're a coach is that you feel that you can turn that person around a lot of the time. You know, the lot of, hey, if I just, you know, another session, another session, we'll get this going, we'll get this going. That just doesn't work for me. You know, like you've, you've got it or you don't, like you want it or you don't. And if, if you don't want my level of accountability and push, there are other coaches out there. The other thing I think can happen sometimes is that when, it, when you're an entrepreneur, there's this thing at the moment, and I don't know if it's the same state side that, just saying you're an entrepreneur is some sort of badge of honor. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, we, call, we call it like the entrepreneur. You okay. know, just sort of saying that and being in the game at all. 100%. But you're not really, you're not really playing. You know, somebody made an analogy uh, the other day about, so you go and learn Spanish. Now, are you going to try and learn Spanish so you can order a couple of beers and some tapas somewhere? <laughs> or are you going to actually learn Spanish, understand the culture, really, you know, self in it completely? Um and I think this is that that's the you know that this challenge for entrepreneurs and the accelerator support that that um, can spring up sometimes as well is that they're just trying to support them. And then any failing of that entrepreneur is their own failing. So they keep people going and going again. None of the, the sort of the motives are negative for that. But I just think that happens. People are afraid to push people to the next level. But if you look at somewhere like the Navy SEALs or the SAS in the UK, right? Like they're not saying, "Well, it's so you know, oh, that's fine. You didn't you, you didn't manage yeah. to complete that run. Yeah, no biggie. No, oh, you're you know, yeah, you, you could put down them, uh, whatever. You know, you you didn't manage to carry your your backpack that far. It's okay. It's a bit better luck next time. Right. It doesn't work. You know. I think people need that level of push. There's no Olympians out there that have got a soft coach. And that's really the you know the kind of entrepreneurs that I'm interested in working with, and maybe it sounds like we could do with a, a bit more of that. 
Yeah, I think we definitely could, you know, because I, I, I look for coaches quite often. And, and the coach that I'm with now for the course that I'm, I've been working on for an Infinity, I knew her previously. We both worked in a mastermind together to write a book. And we both were one of the only ones out of the mastermind to finish our book in the allotted, allotted period of time. So cool, we, we knew each other. We did it. We worked it. We both went number one in our respective categories on Amazon. So, uh, nice. you know, we, we, did every, we did what we were supposed to do. So we knew we were a good fit for each other. And, but she's a better student than, and Ellie, if you're listening, honey, I love you to death, but you, she's a better <laughs> student and, and a teammate than maybe as a coach. And she knows too, that this is her first endeavor as a coach. So this is her first, she, this is her first outing. She's trying to build a network of Udemy instructors. And I've always wanted to do a, a Udemy course. So it worked out perfect. Sure. But what are some of the things that we can look for? You're obviously a very strict and very in your face and hold you accountable kind of coach. How do we find coaches that fit our personalities without just going through and interviewing, you know, all these, is that how you do it? You just go, you, you find coaches and you interview them or what, what, what are some of your tips there? Have you told Ellie what you want? Well, I've told Ellie that uh, I want to finish the course, but also too, I've always got, well, I did this and then I did that. And now I'm, you know, I have all these freaking excuses and I have, I, I do ask, I ask Larry, is this, are you really making an excuse? Or is it a personality trait that's stopping you from making the progress at the rate that you want to make it? Because I think I am putting way too much into this course for something mm. that's going to sell for nine ninety nine. You know, I'm I'm, sure, I'm putting effort into it for something that sells for nine hundred ninety nine, or if not more. Um, and and I think maybe my my perception of what I'm building is way out of whack. And mm -hmm. so maybe I'm not listening there when she goes, Larry, just just get something out. Let's just publish it. Let's just publish it. I'll tell you, man, I had a guy that I interviewed on the podcast. He hasn't gone live yet for this episode. He said his way of, of holding people accountable is he makes them commit to donating to something that they don't really support. <laughs> yeah, okay? I've done that. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did that with somebody. It was, um, I had to buy a Justin Bieber hoodie oh, see? If, I hadn't, uh, if I hadn't completed this task. One of the most evil organizations <laughs> on earth, Justin Bieber merchandise and arms, you know? Well, I ended up, I, I, I committed to a hundred bucks to uh -huh. get my course done by May 1st. And if I didn't do it, then I was donating a hundred bucks to uh, the opposing political, political campaign that I don't necessarily support. And I didn't yep. make it. And I made the donation, but, and, and I sent him the receipt showing here, I made the donation just like I said I would do, but I'm still not done with the course. So even that, I gave a hundred bucks away <laughs> to something I don't support and I still don't have the results. and. I'm closer because I really, really dug in for that week and a half that I gave myself uh, to get sure. it done, but yeah, I'm still not there. So, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that, I, I don't know, we're not turning this into a Larry, uh, you know, a therapy <laughs> session. I don't mean to do that with you, but uh, don't send me a bill I, afterwards. <laughs> so, I, do, I do have that effect on people, Larry. <laughs> I have to say. I'm going to start crying before it's over. Go, man, I'll try it. You, <laughs> you would you would be the first mate. Do you know what the thing is with, with my group? It is the consequence. It's those those deadlines. Sometimes they are being hit. You know, an hour before they're due. Yeah. Um. Like they've been that action has been put off and put off. And the learn experience from that is still eat the frog thing, right? I mean, if you've got to eat a frog, do you do it first thing in the morning or last thing at, at night? Because if you're doing it last thing at night, all you're doing all day is thinking, I've got to eat that frog later on, man. I'm really not looking forward to eating that frog. Like, it just interferes with your whole day, right? <laughs> so the, the the thing is that if you can get that done, and once you start taking those those bold actions, the next one's bolder, the next one's bolder, the next one's bolder. But we talk about the consequence, and it is you are out. You know, I put them out for a month, um, and then it's like, so do you, do you actually want this or not? You know, so the, oh, wow. I think that's the, the, the power of that consequence means that it's not a total finality. It's more take a step out and think about what is the level of accountability and push that you want? You know, is this the right place for you? And, I, you know, I, I do lose clients. I think that, um, and that and that's fine because, to be honest, mate, there's nothing worse as a coach than working with a bad client. Like there are clients that it doesn't matter what the amount of money is. That, the bad client for me is somebody who expects a rescue job. You know, that they're looking for me to sort of save their business or turn it around or it, it just doesn't work like that. So when you ask about how do you find that coach, I think a good question to ask is what clients have you let go? You know, and what do you do with clients when they are not upholding their 
Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, and that's a very unique. Those are those unique, kind of questions. That's a very unique perspective. I haven't heard that before. So I, I like that a lot. Um, it's definitely something. And, you know, I think maybe potentially the accountability that my current coach, the way she holds you accountable, she doesn't charge anything until the course goes live. And then we have a contract that says she gets X percent um, in perpetuity of this first course. But then I can create any other courses. And uh, that's all mine. So it's all cool. But there's no financial accountability at all up until the point that you get it done. So, Larry, Larry, do you want to do this course? I do. I do. I'm too far in, man. I'm not going to quit. I promise you. I'm not going to quit. It's going to get done. It's going to get done. So when? Well, I've already committed to the 15th. (laughs) So uh, I gave myself two more weeks. So the 15th. And right now, okay, I've, re- I've written that down, mate. Write it down, write it down, and I'll eat a frog on on air. I'll, I'll Facebook Live. I've never I'll, heard. I'll send you a Scottish frog if you haven't done that stuff by then. Right? I'll, I'll get your address at the end of the podcast. I have not eaten a frog before, so I'll check that out. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to get done. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's just being able to draw that line. But the question mm. that, that that you posed. As far as how to find a coach, I think that's phenomenal. And it's almost like a reverse way of thinking about how to find a coach. So Mm. I I like that. It's a a unique perspective. It's one that I haven't heard. And it's definitely not one that I've employed. Mm. Yeah. Primarily because, I mean, almost coaching, and and no disrespect intended, but it's almost as though the whole coaching thing, it's almost taken on a life of its own. And everybody is a coach of something. You know, oh, I'm an emotional coach, or I'm an entrepreneurial coach, or I'm a this coach, or some kind of coach that allows me to charge extensive amounts of money and provide just a verbal or emotional support. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. that your perspective and the and your dedication to release students for not living up to their expectations that's unique Mm -hmm. too. I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard anybody doing that. And it, it almost sounds counterproductive to you as a coach because uh, obviously it's money out of your pocket. But it also shows a dedication level on your part that is demonstrative and will inspire others to meet the level of requirement that you have. So uh, there's, I think that's there, awesome. there's a level of, uh, you know, there's a level of self interest there as well about I get to work with exciting people. Right. You know, the guys that I'm, I'm working with, the some of the acceleration in their development is it inspires me. You know, like they're just so exciting to work with. And you see them six months, you know, like I say, they're, they're, they're knocking on doors of independent shops trying to get some product in. And then we're about 18 and they're looking at all these international markets and they're flying to this place and that. You know, that's it's still a tough slog for them. I'm not, again, we're not talking about people are, you know, billionaires out of this yet but like the acceleration in their growth and the levels that they have the conversations at their leadership skills because this whole thing about um your your mindset it is about how you leverage your strengths it is about how you engage people and get them on board when you're an entrepreneur you've got to do it your way and if you don't know what those strengths are the the challenge a lot of people have larry for me is that they underappreciate the strengths that they've got so those that are those natural communicators much like yourself, do you know that you just kind of you undervalue that and you see you see what you don't have in that, you know, that camp yet. You see those guys like people that can go and like network and, you know, work a room. I'd imagine you're probably quite good at working a room. And I, I can't, you know, I can't really do that. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm envious of the, the oh, and I'm, I'm a pretty good strategist. And then you think, well, just, you know, entrepreneur, just go and write up a strategy. Fine. I'll, I'll see you in 15 minutes. But you know, you undervalue what you've got. So the whole thing about mindset is this real um, audit of all of the all of those abilities and this analysis of the the shadow self to to understand when it is going to attack you and what is your recovery mechanism to get back out from that. And the thing is that not everybody should be an entrepreneur. You know, um, if you if you want a if you want like a specialized role. The journey from starting your own business to creating that own specialized role for you is very, very long. Um, and you have to, you know, the level of commitment to doing that, for some people, it just, it's not going to be worth it, you know? Um, but only by, for me, only by understanding your mindset will you be able to make a proper judgment call on what the right thing is for you. 
No, I appreciate you saying that. And I can't think of a better way to sum up the episode than you just did. So I'm going to leave it right there at that. I think that's great. We've been going at it 30 minutes. I don't want to hold you too long. But what I do want to do is I want to make sure that we get all of your information so that if anybody wants to reach out to you and work with you, what's the best way to do that? What's your website and that sort of thing? Uh, Also, please tell us what country you're from, because I thought it was England. You know, I didn't realize Edinburgh was not in England, and I embarrassed myself right out of the gate. We weren't recording, but I can't let that slide. I got to I got to hold myself accountable. (laughs) Yeah, that bridge is already burned, my oh, friend. Man, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, trying to, burned. I'm trying to take responsibility for it, man. <laughs> no, okay, good move, good move, take responsibility. Yeah, so um, the website's mindsetexperts.co.uk. What we've got on there is there's a four-week intro to superhuman mindset. So if you're interested in mindset, you just want to find out a bit more, you want a bit of a, a test of yourself, see what you're capable of, that's online. There's a weekly accountability, obviously. And if you're not up to date each week, you are off. The other program is 12 weeks where we look a bit deeper at your mindset as an entrepreneur. And um, there's coaching that's involved in that as well. So there are clients that I work with where it's remote, you know, if they can't get to the group because it's obviously physically in one city. Um, But we do like to try and connect those guys. The physical ones are are helpful. But if you can't make that, then, you know, there's a one-to-one. So you can find out information on the website, mindsetexperts.co.uk. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn as well. So Joe Trodden on LinkedIn. There is only, I think there is only one. Um, So they'll be able to find me on LinkedIn as well. And please do connect. I mean, I'd love to hear some of the stories from your listeners. I'd love to hear what their challenges are. Um, I just like talking to interested people, man. Good deal, man. Well, I appreciate it once again for you taking this time. What time is it over there right now? It is half past midnight. Half, oh, my God. Wow. I really, really appreciate it now. And now I feel bad. But hey, man, <laughs> your spirits are off the charts for it being half past midnight. So I'm a committed guy. What man, can I tell you? obviously. Wow. Well, hold on just a minute. Let me wrap this up and I'll be right back with you and we'll say our goodbyes. OK, cool. Hey, everybody. Thanks again for listening to an awesome episode. And it was an awesome episode. I learned geography. I learned about coaching. I learned all kinds of things. And hopefully you did too. So take advantage of the opportunity. Go out, find Joe, connect with him, and uh, maybe learn a little something or two from him. I think, well, I don't think, I know he has a lot to contribute. And I'm pretty confident that he can help each and every one of us grow further in our entrepreneurial endeavors. So, hey, and remember, if you want to start a podcast, you know how it is. One plus one equals podcast, where I simplify the equation of podcasting success. Grab the book. Hang on, the course is coming. I promise it's coming. But go out, Amazon, the book's on there right now. You're already helping me out by listening, and I appreciate it. And we'll do it again next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.